everybody, it's Lizzy coming at you once again from the interwebs. And today I am here with a, a little tutorial. Uh, I'm probably going to think of a better name later, but for now it is called Things That Will Make Your Digital Art Life Easier. So this is just going to be a few tips that I have and that I picked up as someone that has been doing digital art for a little while. This is a video kind of for either someone that's that knows a bit about art and is a little bit new to digital art or someone that has been doing digital art for a little bit for like a little while but they um, they don't really know a lot of tips and tricks so these are just a few things that I found were a problem for me that I learned along the way that made things way easier for me as a digital artist so the first thing you go and you start a new file you go up here you might not be able to see it in this recording. You go up to file at the very top, go to new, and then you will have the image thingy. And so we'll make a new canvas. This is the canvas. This is what you are drawing on. When I go to draw, it is on this layer. So over here, you have your layers down here at the bottom for me. For you in your program, it might be somewhere else, but I think for the most part, it is gonna be over on the right and maybe towards the bottom. So you have your layers. I know in some programs, layers might be tricky. In Fire Alpaca, which is the program I'm using, and I'm sure in Medibang also since they're pretty much the same thing. It's really easy to add a new layer. You just go down to this little tiny little page and you click a new one. And so layers are really really good because you can draw on one thing like let's say I'm drawing this person and then let's say I want to draw hair on them. So I go in and I go wow look at this hair you know wow that's so cute and then I want to go and erase the head that's underneath and I'm erasing part of the hair and I don't want to do that but if I have a new layer I can go under here and I can draw the hair you know it's super cute and then I can go under and it'll only erase things that are on that layer so layers are super good if you want to kind of do different things and the layers go in an order so the thing on the very top is going to be the one that's shown on the top so if I were to put the layer down here you can see right here the black is above the red which you might not want obviously if you're like erasing the black you're going to not see it anymore but it just causes a bunch of problems so if you want something that wants to show up above another thing, you need to make sure that that layer is at the very top. I only say this because for some people that might seem very obvious. When I first started, I didn't realize they had a layer. So I would draw things and then I would go in and like erase it like very meticulously and it was always a bad time. So I'm just going to tell you guys right now, use layers, it will save your life. Another thing, let's empty this layer. You can go up through here and clear the layer or you can just erase it. I'm lazy, so I do that. But another thing is that if you want to draw something, if I went in right now and I went to go draw something and I was like, ooh, yeah, yeah, this looks super good. Wow, wow. And I go in and like suddenly like things aren't looking great and it's like, uh. And so what most artists do is that they will get something before they start, which is what you should definitely get into the habit of doing if you haven't started already ready. So what I usually like to do is in Fire Alpaca, they have this nice little feature called the pencil. It's very good. I go in here with the snap, um, the snap in Fire Alpaca. If I were to draw anywhere in here, it would only draw in the circle form. If I have it on circle, if I have it on lines, it'll only draw on the lines, which is really neat. So I will go in and I start off with the head. I always start off with the head, which is my demise because I don't know how to draw legs, but I'll go in there and I'll make the head and then I will sketch out the drawing. So I'm going to sketch out this drawing and then I'm gonna come back to you. Okay, so I've made my sketch and you can see that it's very bright, it's very red, it's very messy. That is because it is the sketch, this is not the final drawing. So then what I'm going to do is I can, there are different ways to do this. Some people do their sketch on the bottom, some people do the sketch on the top. I prefer to put my sketch at the very top and then see here right here this little bar that says opacity it says here it's at 100% opacity for those of you that don't know means transparency so basically the if it's at 100% this is going to be all the way there it's not going to be as transparent at all or if you're using pens that are more transparent it's going to be as transparent as it can't be at 100% and then 0% it's going to be completely gone it's going to be as transparent as it can I would get to know these terms by the way because it took me a while to learn them and people never know what you're talking about and they're kind of snooty about it they'll be like oh you said invisible don't you mean opacity and it's like fuck off Sharon I try to put my sketch at it about yeah, about here about 30 percent to 40 percent opacity and then I'll go onto this layer I'll use a darker color and I'll go in and I'll use a much more stable pen I personally put up my correction to about 10 when I do line art and correction is pen stability so if it's at zero 
your lines are going to be very quick. If it's at 19, your lines are going to be very slow and smooth. It's all about preference. I like to do my line art at around 10 to 13. And then if I'm doing hair, I like to put it higher. So for this, I'm going to go through and I'm going to zoom in and I'm on a different layer and I'm going to just kind of line it. And you know, you can make mistakes, but usually line art is where you want to kind of get it right. You know, go in and fix that and go in, you kind of do your lines. I'm going to go line this and I will come back to you guys when I'm done. Okay, that is the, um, I did the line art. It's by no means good. I'm trying to make this not take forever but you know I have all of my different pieces I have the hair on one layer I have the eyes and stuff and that and then I have my sketch layer and so now I can make that gone I can erase that or I can leave it up just in case I still need it but I don't have my sketch anymore and so that's a good way to have all of your stuff there and then you know you don't have it then and then also you know hey I got my stuff on different layers so I can go in and erase this and I won't be erasing the rest of the hair uh -huh. see Put that, putting that in action, I can go up here. Oh, wow, <laughs> that didn't erase. So I have other tips. Now I have my drawing. Let's say I want to color it. I can go down here. I can make a new layer. Here's another tip, which I, for some reason, deleted off my list and I shouldn't have. This will make your life a lot easier, especially if you have multiple layers and you're doing a bunch. You can go in here and you can name the layers. So like, uh, I can name this hair fine art and I can name it. And so now I'm like down here and I'm coloring and I'm like, oh wait, which layer is the hair on? Oh, it's in this one. So you should go in and you should name all of your layers. So this is a line art. Should have been doing this before. I'm dumb. I didn't even listen to my own list. I'm not even listening to my own tips. Body line art. And so this new one, I'm going to name it body color. So there are a couple of different ways to color when you are drawing. One of my favorites for if you're doing a big block of color and you don't really want to deal with anything is you can go in and let's say I want to make her shirt this color. I can go and I can make a box and I can go over her shirt and that's done. And then if you want to erase it, what I used to do is if I like had something I would go in and I would erase it and oh my god it took me 5,000 years. I thought it was pretty therapeutic but I found an easier way. So let's go in here and make sure that there's no gaps for what I'm about to do. Ooh, zoom's important but how important? Is it worth it? Yeah, it is. I'm gonna go in here. I should probably not film this, but it's I'm I'm almost done. I'm almost done. It's it's fine. Okay, so now I can go down here to my fill tool, and right here there's this little transparent box. And when I fill, boom, did you see that? Here, let me show you again. Boom. So it gets rid of anything that isn't there. It's gonna make it transparent. So oops, that was a liner. I'm gonna go in here and look, my shirt's like filled in, but the rest of the drawing isn't. So you can fill things in with a box and you can do that. It's pretty much the uh, more simple way of just filling a color in. Like if I wanted to make her shorts like a, like a greenish color, I could just fill it in. It's kind of just an easier way to do that. But definitely the takeaway from that is to go in and make it transparent with the fill tool because that will save you so much time. Oh my gosh, that is, that's a good tip. Honestly, if you're going to take anything away from this video, it's to make things transparent with the fill tool. And I mean, don't just rely on that. Obviously, like, go in later and be like, oh, I missed a spot. You know, I should go in and I should fix that. And, like, don't forget, like, the tiny details. But that'll definitely save you a lot of time. <laughs> Trust me, a lot of time. Okay, so let's say I'm I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm good with this line art. Wow, it looks good. And the coloring, it's so good. Well, some artists, I'm kind of, I'm not really a stickler for this, but if you want to improve your line art and make your drawings more interesting, a lot of people suggest not to color your line art in with black. And, you know, it, black's a really easy color to draw with because it's very contrasting to the background. Some people are like, mm, you shouldn't use black or blah blah blah. So here's what you can do. You can color it in with black. This only works on some pens. I wouldn't do this for all pens, but if you're doing something very simple, like this pen tool then you can go on to your line art layer huh? see I lamed it so I know exactly which one it is and right here do you see this thing that says clipping you're gonna make a new layer you're going to click clipping so you're gonna make sure that box is checked and what that does is now when I draw I'm gonna use here I'll use a color that stands out more when I draw, it only shows up on that layer. And I know a bunch of people have done tutorials about this, but that when I learned about that, that was magic. I used to do this thing before where I would like go onto this and I would go up here, I would go select from layer and opacity and I would go in through here. And that worked, but sometimes like you could see, I don't know if you can see this, there's kind of like this black outline. But meanwhile, if I go onto the clipping layer, you don't get 
that black line. See right here, you have this little black outline. I'll zoom in a little bit more. You get this black outline over here, but over here, you don't have that. So I think that it's better to go into this, you name it, you do the lines color. And let's say I want to make this, you know, just, just a little bit darker because you know, it doesn't need to be that high contrast. I can go in and I can color over the lines. Um, I would, if you have like, it, like this one, I just did all my line art on one. This is the best time to use the box method. And then like, let's say I want to do this down here. It's easier if you have them all on different layers because then you don't have to go in and like fill different things in. You know, I want to do her, her skin. Maybe she's like this color. Go in here. You know, it, that's, it's just a good time to use the box method. And then that's a good way. See, look, like, I mean, it's kind of ugly because I didn't really care where I did it, but it, it just looks a lot better if you, if you do that with your line art. You know, it's like suddenly it's a little bit more interesting. So don't be afraid to do that. Another thing that you shouldn't be afraid of is if you're doing very simple shading, like let's say, um, let's, let, let's say her hair is a colored, it's brick. Okay, I'm gonna color her hair real quick. Okay, we're back. Okay, her hair's colored. That was actually a much quicker problem than I thought. I could have easily done that on the screen, but I have her hair colored and let's say I wanna shade and I could go in, you know, get a darker color maybe make it a little bit down and you know if I want to if I want to use watercolor I can go in and I could be like oh it needs to be darker right here I can you know go in but anyway you go in and I'm like oh yeah and then oh it should be lighter up here and not lighter oh look, like oh yeah yeah and then like all that I could do all of that or if this is just a quick drawing I wouldn't exactly do this for every drawing you know like painting is obviously one of the best forms of shading but if I just want to do a quick little shading right here, I can go up, I can make my clipping, I could go and shading. And I could go in here and I could get my gradient. I don't know why Fire Packet does this, but the, it'll automatically go to foreground, background. For your gradient, do foreground. And you can go in here and I could be like, oh, bam, suddenly it's shaded. And I could go up here and it'd be, oh, bam, suddenly it's shaded. And then... Remember what I showed you about that opacity earlier? Well, this is on a new layer, so we can go in here and we can lower the opacity. And suddenly it's not as harsh and it's very casual. And so like, this is good for like, I like to do this where I'll kind of get this and I like to make it bigger. I took this tip from Leslie Lou Marie. Should I, I wonder if I should link her in this video. She has a lot of really good fire alpaca tips. I would do the highlight and I should do the low light and then I would bring it down. And that makes it just a little bit less extra, you know, maybe. Maybe I'm in here and I made like a lot of like, you can see, you can still see them, but it also still has the highlight. And so I think that's very good. These drawings aren't very good. <laughs> these tips are very, very simple things. It'll just make your life a little bit easier when you're using digital art. These are a lot of problems that I had issues with when I first started digital art. And so I want to share these with you so that you don't make these mistakes or you make them a little bit less. Maybe you're sitting there and you've been doing digital art for a few months now and you're thinking, oh gosh, you know, this is good because I've had these exact problems. Or maybe you are very new to digital art and you have been, think you've been doing this and it seemed really hard and now you're looking at it and it just looks a little bit easier. Maybe you've been doing digital art for years and you've been doing these things, but you've been doing them a little bit differently or you've been doing them maybe a little bit harder and you're thinking now like, oh, that's a little bit easier now. I didn't think of that. That's pretty good. And so these are just, just a few, this is just gonna make your life a little bit easier while you're making digital art, okay? I, that's, digital art can be seen as something that's very scary to people that are new to making digital art. And it can be seen as very intimidating. And you know, there's some people out there that make some very, very good art pieces with their digital art. And there's just little things that you can do, like little things that can, you can edit your image and make it a whole lot, I wouldn't say better, but just a whole lot more interesting or a whole lot more dynamic or it just shows how much you know how to do digital art and it's these little tricks that'll just make your life easier. So thank you very much for watching this. Just go out there and do your best in digital art and have fun and you can do as w whatever you want, but if you want to follow these tips, they will make your life just a little bit easier than if you went in and you did things without these tips. These are just things, I know that they're easier because I'm the one that figured them out. I'm the one that heard them and I thought, oh, they make my life way easier. And there are other tutorials out there that'll make your life easier. I'll, I'll link a few different tutorials in the description. If you need an art program, I highly, highly, highly suggest Fire Alpaca or Medibank. And Leslie Lou Marie is a great place to start with those tutorials. There's other artists out there like uh, Scotch, 
has an animation tutorial for Fire Alpaca. I don't see that many people using Fire Alpaca, but it's free and it's a really good program. And it has a lot of things that Photoshop offers. And Photoshop's like the best program out there according to a lot of people and according to how much you have to pay for it. But this is free. So you should get out there and you should use this program and you should use these tips and you should have a good time. So thank you very much for watching this video. Check out my other videos, like and subscribe, all that jazz. Wait for the next video? I don't know, watch, I don't know, have, have, be happy. Bye bye.